In this video, we'll start by talking about the rectangular form of a complex number. And the rectangular form of a complex number is one of three ways which we're going to express complex numbers. Rectangular form is made up of something that looks like this up here, a plus bj, where a is a real number part, and bj is referred to as the imaginary part. A pure imaginary number, which it talks about down here, is when the a is equal to zero, so we just have the bj. A and b here are real numbers, so we end up with things that look like, we see down here further, 3 minus 2j, negative 2 plus 5j, and things like that. We compare two complex numbers by comparing their real number parts, in this case a with x, and b with y. If those are equal, then the complex numbers are equal. The conjugate of a complex number is something that we are going to have to use periodically, and the conjugate refers to changing the sign of the imaginary portion of the complex number. So in this instance, a plus bj, would, the conjugate is a minus bj. So only the imaginary part is changed. In this first example that we're going to do here, we just want to find the conjugate of each of the following. So the conjugate of 3 minus 2j is 3 plus 2j. The conjugate of minus 2 plus 5j is minus 2 minus 5j. Notice only the imaginary term is changing. The conjugate of 6j is minus 6j. Another way to think about that, this would have been 0 plus 6j. Now it's 0 minus 6j. So again, only the imaginary part is changing. The conjugate of 3 is 3. Again, how do we think about that? 0 or 3 plus 0j is now 3 minus 0j. We don't need to worry about the 0, so we just have the 3. The purple box here shows us a very important rule or statement. We've used this extensively in simplifying radicals that the root of a times the root of b is the root of a times b. But that was only true for positive values. It is not true if both numbers are negative. It does apply if one is negative and one is positive, but we cannot use the rule if both are negative. To get around this so we don't have to worry about, oh, can we put them together, can we not put them together? We recommend you simplify everything to j first. If you reduce it as much as you can before doing any other operations, you won't run into this problem at all. So in this instance, we would simply write, this is 2j, remember, the negative gives us the j, the 4 square root is 2, and now we square it. Now we don't have to worry about what rules we're applying. So this is 4j squared, j squared is minus 1, so minus 4. The square root of negative 2 and the square root of negative 6, what you cannot do is multiply those together. That would give you the square root of positive 12, which is not the correct answer. In this case, we're going to say first, well, that's 2 or j root 2, we can't reduce the 2, and this is j root 6. Once we have j times root 2 and j times root 6, now that 2 and 6 are positive, we can put those together and we end up with j squared times root 12, and simplifying more, j squared is minus 1, so negative root 12, well that's root 3 times root 4, or 2 root 3. In this case, we need to pay close attention to where the squared is. It's actually asking us to square negative 7 first and then take the square root, which means really that's the square root of 49, negative 7 squared, which is simply 7. And in the final one here, again, order of operations first. So we're going to leave the square root. We're going to leave the squared. We're going to work inside. So negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 under a root means 4i or j all squared, which means negative 16. j squared is negative 1. There's the negative. 4 squared is 16, so there's 16. Those are some more examples of simplifying the roots with the negatives. We can also do some basic operations with complex numbers adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. When we learn about some more forms of complex numbers, polar and exponential specifically, we're going to see that for multiplication and division, those are actually better. 
for addition and subtraction, rectangular form is the only form that we use. What we want to be careful of when we're doing these examples is first simplify the radicals as much as possible. What that means is we want to get the J in there if we need it and reduce things as much as we can. That will prevent any of the errors that could occur with using some of the rules for radicals that only apply to positive. So again, when you start these questions, reduce as much as you can the radicals, take care of the negative under the root, then start following the rules. So for addition subtraction, we're just going to do addition subtraction like we would normally. Uh, any algebraic addition subtraction, put the real parts together, put the imaginary parts together, simplify as much as you can. Multiplication, again, exactly as we'd expect, distributive property, multiply as if the j was simply an x, simplify at the end, and that's going to be important because if we end up with situations like j squared, we know we have to reduce those. Finally, division, we want to use the conjugate, and the conjugate we should know, we change the imaginary sign or the sign of the imaginary term so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate when we want to rationalize denominators which is division so you should be able to do these examples if you want to pause the video and make sure you can work them all out I'm not going to show you the individual steps in the video but I will complete all the answers and write them there so you have them As you can see, I've completed the answers for each of these 10 questions. So maybe pause the video here now, double check your answers. Just as a recap, remember when we're adding, subtracting, like C, real numbers together, imaginary numbers together. We're multiplying, say like I and J. After simplifying, of course, we're just going to here use binomial expansion or just FOIL method. And here we're going to simplify and then multiply the two monomials together. When we're dividing in examples E and F and G and H, multiply first by the conjugate. So for example, to get E, the first thing that I would have done was multiply by 3 minus 4J over 3 minus 4J. Regular multiplication then, simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and this would be the result that we get. So make sure you got all these answers. And in the next video, we'll talk about graphing complex numbers.